everybody and welcome back. I am doing another um, kind of editing tutorial video today. I just wanted to share with you a fantastic, fantastic um, thing that I found out, which is basically the um, quick selection tool. I didn't find out about the quick selection tool. I've, I've known about it, but I found out that there's something else that I can do with the quick selection tool. Now, I don't know if anybody else goes through the same problem. I have a pretty much small space in my studio. So sometimes um, my 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 clients or my models can be a bit uh, taller than my backdrops and a bit like out of the backdrop because I've got too many people in there. So I'm always like constantly on Photoshop trying to extend my backdrop and and fill out that empty gap. So today I am sharing with you this photo which I thought was gonna take me ages and I thought I was gonna have to figure out some sort of a magical way to Photoshop it but it's actually quite more simpler than that. Um, it was an I, I've, I always play around with layer masks and um, the selection tool because it's got this amazing feature where I don't actually have to go around the edges uh, manually. I can just like do the quick selection tool and uh, it'll recognize the pixels that are um, apparent uh, than the foreground and the background. I'm going to show you what I figured out. Now I've got this subject, well I've got this, uh, my subject is, his, his head is out of the range of where the backdrop should be. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select my uh, quick selection tool um, on the plus and I'm going to go around. It doesn't have to be perfect because uh, that's the, that's not the part that I'm using. Anyways, I'm, I'm, I only need his head to be perfect and um, quite nicely selected. So the quick selection tool is actually doing a pretty good job recognizing um, what are the bits that are popping out in the photos and what I'd like to keep which is really really good I do love this tool I use it like almost in every photo that needs a backdrop extension or every photo that needs um, um, background to be brightened or a different color because I go through that a lot because I, I use um, I feather my light so not much light goes into the backdrop and that way I lose a lot of my light that, uh, of my color from my backdrop so sometimes I have to um, take my subjects out of the backdrop and like just fix the colors or the brightness of the backdrop um, uh, individually so I use, a, I use the quick selection tool quite a lot so I thought I would try it with this one I haven't had a photo like to edit like this in a while so I thought I would now try it with with a photo like this and maybe even share it with you so now that I've selected it I'm going to going to click refine edge which is uh, on the top there um, and it's going to kind of like um, extract the sub the the selection that I've that I've highlighted so I always have it on these settings obviously you can always change it around but I'm not really fussed I always have it on these settings. So I'm just going to hit OK. And I'm going to click this back on, this layer here back on. And then I'm going to click on my background layer. And then I'm going to go over to a rectangle, rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to click that. So because I've only got this tiny bit that I need to cover out, I'm just going to take a selection from that bit like that. I know, it looks so crazy, like his head is right there. And then I'm going to hit the Command T or Control T on Windows. And I'm going to pull this bit up. That looks like really insane, but I can fix it. So now I'm going to create a new empty layer right there and I'm, it's going to have to be placed between the background layer and my masked layer up here so it's going to be in the middle and then I'm going to take a brush 
and I'm going to choose the same color as this one here. And then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to start painting. Usually I paint at 34%, 35%. I don't like to overdo it just because uh, the longer that you take painting it, the more the color is believable. Because see if I do this now, okay, I'm going to take a selection of this color here and I'm going to go all the way up and just, can you see that? That doesn't look so good. I can still see the bits here and I still have to fix that and it's just a hassle. So I'm going to go with the 34% where my brush is not so harsh and I'm going to paint that bit. So as you can see that all I had to do was brush these bits out and because we have a layer mask up here, it um, hindered me from actually painting on his head, which is amazing. I don't have to go back and do another layer mask like that and just paint over it because I don't want it to be in his it's just so much simpler and more easier it's actually quite amazing I am fascinated by the speed that I've done this with it hasn't taken me like a minute and that is just super cool before and after seamless seamless editing seamless backdrop extension as if nothing happened and I'm really just quite surprised and I really, really, really love the um, quick selection tool. It is just so amazing. I hope you guys somehow found this helpful or found a tip that you might use or like help you with an image that you'd like extending but you are so like scared of what you're going to do with it because you don't, you have so much painting to do and redo and undo and it's not going to take you any time as long as you do it like that. I'll speak to you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.